Somebody enjoyed. Well, we enjoyed. We enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. I, I can't believe some of those lyrics really hold true to today. That was uh, we guys. We sang that in 1992. We sang that on the Dove Awards. Yeah, remember in the nineteen. Rem remember the dance move we had. Very awkward. Yes. <laughs> Very well, you know, what, what, the, I mean, I want to get to that in a second because I mean, <laughs> it's amazing to me because. Guys, we have no notes today. No, because oh we're, gosh, we're no, have no notes. Oh, no. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now we're preaching like Angelo preaches. <laughs> off the cuff, right, Arturo? <laughs> That's it, baby. 
You know what? You know, I, I wanted to tell you. You know, yeah. we started off. It was great because Eva came in and she was laying here. And I said, per "Oh, here she comes! Eva's our cat, here comes Eva, way, and Eva's she our cat. she's going to be like a typical church member. She's going to go by the door and she's going to go to sleep." <laughs> so uh, I love you, Eva. But <laughs> anyway, we're just so honored and blessed you would have us yeah. in in your home today, yeah. uh, right. and uh, we love you more. So. I'll tell you what, it's, it's amazing, um, Veronica, the, yeah. the journey that we've been on yeah. for 29 years and yeah. what, we've, you yeah. know, what we've experienced. Yeah. Uh, and to, to, to talk about that. Uh, yeah, we're together yeah. after well, 29 well, well, years. Well, Some people didn't, didn't think we would make it, you know, five, minutes. five years. <laughs> five minutes. No, it's amazing to me because on that Double Ward show, Veronica was on the other side of the stage. And I was on one other side of the stage. And I'm praying. I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus, is she going to come on? Is she going to come on the stage? So you have to understand, Veronica doesn't like the limelight. She doesn't like the sink. She doesn't like the, uh, she doesn't like the, uh, the talking. She doesn't like the, she doesn't like, she didn't like that. She was very, very shy. It, what's amazing to me is because, most of the songs that you hear from Angela and Veronica from 1992 till present day came from the prophetess. It came, came right from the voice of God. God spoke through her, through that music. That's why we are here today as Angela and Veronica 29 years later because the word of God held us together. Okay? Right. And the thing is, is that if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, your marriage is in trouble. If you don't have an understanding of God's word and what God un and what God says about marriage, yeah. not what Angelo says, and what he says about divorce. In other words, I tell people all the time, why would you do something God doesn't like? Or let me put you a little harsher. What would you do? Why, why would you do something God hates? And you know, yeah. have I done things that, that are appalling to God? Yes, I have. But I repented. See, we need to repent. It's like Peter said, you know, yeah. repent or perish, right? Mm -hmm. So my thing is, is that, Jesus. and Jesus said, yeah, but, but, yeah. but he also, Peter yeah. said it too. Yeah. Repent. Right. Okay, not I'm sorry, repent. Okay, anyway, mm. um, yeah. it's amazing. You know, yeah. and so I, love, I love how you say, if you cannot be faithful to a person, mm. how can you be faithful to God? There's no way. You know? Now, if they, right, that, if that, if that relationship... Yeah. If this isn't strong, how can right. I possibly be faithful yeah. to a God I yeah. don't even see? And how do we learn faithfulness from God mm. who is faithful to us? Hallelujah. That's how that's we right. learned faithfulness. And that's how we learn to be faithful to our spouse. Amen. You know? uh, I, I just want to say, uh, this is, we're just, we're, again, going back to the devil wards. I'm like, Veronica's on the other side of the stage, and I'm looking at her, and she, she looked petrified. I'm like, oh, yeah, boy. I'm sure I was. Yeah. Oh, you were scared. I don't remember. It's like I mean, blur. Eva has more <laughs> bravery back then. Than oh, you yeah. Had, you know? Yeah, she's and it's, fearless. It's, yeah, exactly. And it's like, my, I, I'm like, oh, Lord, Jesus, she's going to come out. Then we had to do this goofy dance move, you know, in a ballad. I'm like, wait a minute. A ballad. I was like, what, what, what? Who told us to do that? I don't know. Uh, you know whatever, whatever. And I have no recollection. <laughs> yeah. And we, that's good that we have none because <laughs> on certain things. No, yeah, but anyway, yeah. I'm going to tell you, you know, I married, I, I, I spent a lot of years without my wife. I was 33 years old when we got married and we started our ministry, just like Jesus. We started our ministry. Right. 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 And it wasn't sinistry and it wasn't monastery. It wasn't. Well, okay. Yeah. And then I heard this guy say out of the 20. Took time to get No, no. To, I heard this guy. I heard this yeah. guy say the other day. Yeah. He said, there's 27 books in the Old Testament. I mean, the New Testament. Right. And 26 of the books talked about warning God's people about the false teachers. Mm, mm -hmm. So, so yeah, don't tell yeah. me the Bible doesn't, doesn't warn you. No, the Bible warns you, yeah. okay, if you're going to these goofy churches and giving your money to these goofy people, these clowns, okay, thinking you're going to yeah. get what they have, like I saw Mike Freeman on, in the Bahamas with his glasses on, right? I'm like, what is this guy doing in the Bahamas? Really? Sorry, Mike. Sorry, that's the way it is, baby. You know what? You call it like it is. Okay, he's in the Bahamas, and you're in the hood. So wait a minute. You took your money, and you're, you're paying for his trip over in the Bahamas, right? I mean, how? I mean, 
my, my, whatever. Let's get, let's get back yeah, on I track here. Talk yeah. about when we first it, met. It, it just cut me all aggravated when I saw that on TV. Anyway, and you know what I'm saying, guys. You know, here at Higher Place, we're not going to hold anything back. We're going to tell it the way it is. If you don't like it, nothing I can do about it. Because am I now your enemy? Because I'm telling you the truth. I'm not lying when I see these things. Your eyes don't lie when you see goofiness and you go, you got to call it out, man. You got to, as a Christian, it's your responsibility. You know what, Veronica? I love what this guy said. He said, it's not just the pastor's responsibility to call somebody out. You're a believer. You call that's them right, out. That's right. Yeah. You call them. You get, get on your, in your, you watch these goofy people on, on Facebook Live. Type in there, I rebuke you, you wolves in sheep clothing. You know, bring the word of God to them because they obviously don't know it. Anyway, so get back to Angela and Veronica. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, 33 years, 29 years ago, and I lived with my mom and dad until I was 33. They were like, when are we going to get rid of this guy? Oh, my goodness. He's like, he's eating us out of house and home. You know, he doesn't pay, you know, what did he pay, one bill? My, my father was funny, man, because I'd wake up in the morning and it'd be like the, the AT&T phone bill. And, and, and my father would write in big black letters, pay up. <laughs> yeah, pay up. Wow. Yeah, so my wow. father. So you did pay bills. Yeah, well, I was forced to. I was, I was like, he had my, he in a headlock. Forced to. You know, I mean, here I am eating this food, you know, not paying the rent, not, not do, no, no responsibilities whatsoever, okay? I mean, I was a spoiled little Raymond from Everybody Loves Raymond. I was, little, I was Everybody Loves Angelo. Okay, and, and and it was crazy, but I remember I was because uh, and I, then I, when I was at Berkeley College of Music, and I was yeah. playing clubs and I was doing my thing, yeah. and I played with some great musicians, by the way, you John J R Robinson. At thirteen years old, you started in clubs right. at thirteen years old when but your dad was sick. It's amazing to me because I yeah. thought, I, and went I, to Berkeley when you were seventeen. Yeah, but I didn't, re- but I didn't realize the musicians that I was actually playing with would be some of the f- most famous in the world today. Yeah, yeah. John yeah. Robinson plays yeah. on a Michael Jackson record. Yeah. Jimmy Earl plays on the Jimmy Kimmel Jimmy show. show. I yeah. mean, Joe Hiller. I mean, who's I could go on down. The, who's on the new album? Correct. Yeah. Jimmy's bad That's to the I bone. Mean, yeah. And he's, yeah. he's a great brother. You guys will be able to hear, great guy. hear Jimmy Earl on the new album. Yep. Yeah. And the thing is, is that it's funny because when I went and, then, and I played guitar, I studied jazz guitar for many years. Yeah. And when I did our first album with... Benson, all of a sudden, I didn't play guitar anymore because they had all these guys here who were better than me. Oh, they, they are studio musicians. Let me tell you something. We wrote the songs. We should have produced the album, but that, that's Benson, see? It's, it's called being, that's what happens when you're under mind control. That's what happens when you sell your soul to these dumbbells who don't even know your music, who don't, don't even understand the anointing of God. They wouldn't know anointing from annoying, okay? It's amazing to me because they weren't even Christian. We thought they were Christian. Yeah, yeah. When we first got... That's a huge, huge... That's the hugest misconception about Christian music, that it's Christian. And that was the hugest misconception for us, and that was the hugest mistake that we made going into the Christian music industry was that it was Christian and that we were dealing with Christians. Right out of the mouth, right yeah. out of the mouth of heathens. No mm-hmm. prayer, no sermon, no yeah, word. No, yeah. But it's Christian. But it's Christian. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Kim Kardashian. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No prayer, no sermon, no word. It's not Christian. And hold on, Kanye won his Grammy. Now you don't hear about him pre- preaching anymore. <laughs> okay. Because that's what it was all about. It was all about the Grammy. It wasn't about the Lord. It wasn't about saving anybody. It wasn't even about him being saved. Okay, because we told people just wait, wait and see if this guy's saved. Just like Snoop Dogg, when Fred was, I said, Fred, "What are you doing on that record, man? Get off of that record." They don't listen because they want to be stars. See, well, anyway, to go back. So I was a student at Berkeley College stu- of Music. Oh, <laughs> Arturo, Mark, let me tell you something, Abby. I know what story you're gonna tell. I go to <laughs> Berkeley. And of course, I know everybody at Berkeley. So, I, so I'm in the. I'm, I walk in, and there's a classroom, and there's all these pianos set up in this class. It's a piano classroom, right? And Veronica's in there, and I see her at the piano, and I see what the, she's going. She's looking at the 
the, the music, right? And all of a sudden, I see the teacher come over to and because yeah, I'm behind the glass, so she can't see me. And I see the teacher walk over to her, and he goes, and he looks at her, and she looks up at him and starts crying. <laughs> Big tears start falling. And he, now he's got his arm around her. He's going, oh, it's okay, it's okay. No, it's okay. No, don't, just, don't, just don't go tell the pastor that, you know, that you didn't practice. But anyway, <laughs> it's amazing to me. Veronica, you were crying. Like, and, and guys, I was dying. <laughs> She's crying. What are you crying oh, for? You're nice. Oh, no, I wasn't <laughs> nice at all. <laughs> I, I, I had so much fun watching you in school. But anyway, <laughs> this was when we, first, when we first met. And uh, actually, uh, like I said, I, I lived at home for many years. But I mean... Oh, anyway, I'm going to go back a little bit because I was the number one jingle singer in Boston at that time, in the in the uh, late in the mid '80s to the ni early '90s, and I was doing a lot of recording, and uh, you know, which Veronica never got that opportunity that I promised her when I saw her singing, but I was singing with this in in this studio with this girl, and she said Robin Small, mm -hmm. and she said, "Hey, brother." He said, because she knew I was a Christian. She goes, hey, would you like to, would you like to come see uh, our gospel, the Berkeley, you know, gospel choir guy? I, I, I love it. Yeah, you got tickets? She, she handed me two, you know, two tickets, but I, I went by myself, okay? So I go to Berkeley. I'm sitting right there in the front row, and I'll, the light comes on. I'm, I, I still remember that moment. The light comes on, this beautiful Puerto Rican, well, I didn't know she was Puerto Rican. This beautiful white girl who I thought she was, you know, white. I see, that's, that's how good racism is. You don't even know what people are. <laughs> but, but, you know, but you whine and complain because, you know, you have 400 years of slavery, but you don't even know a slave, okay? I'm and I'm, I'm going to say this, guys. This is real stuff, okay? Stop your culture. Get into Christianity. Read the Bible. If you read the Bible, then you will not, you'll be free from slavery. You'll be free from man's oppression because God lifts the oppression. No man can hold you down, okay? No man. When God, if, if God be for you, can a white man be against you? Can a black man be against you? Okay, so, and I don't want to go into rabbit trail. Anyway, so anyway, I'm, I'm a little excited today because I get my beautiful bride next to me, my Puerto Rican, because she's not white, Okay, so I'm, I had to make that clear. So the light comes on, and there's this gorgeous woman. Girl, not woman, girl. I'm like, wow, okay. Man, nice gospel concert. They, get, they have the, like beautiful, attractive women, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, this is better than church. And it's a <laughs> so Veronica opens her mouth and starts to sing. I went, oh, my goodness. I said, and this was when Mariah was breaking and all these other, you know, singers were up, Whitney Houston and all this thing. And I'm like, they got nothing on this girl. This girl's going to be huge. I said, this girl is going to be huge, huge, okay? So, what was I wrong? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so. Because God had better. God has better, exactly. All right. He, he, he. he you won't lose your soul over what, what is she doing? Eva, okay, don't, worry about don't, don't worry. Oh, anyway, she goes into my wife's drawers and takes out clothes out of there. She, she wants to pick out something to wear to church. <laughs> Get back in there. Anyway, so anyway, uh, I, I, I had to, I went backstage because I wanted to see, meet her. But Robin said, oh, she's, she's, she's back there. I said, I said, well, just tell her, you know, that, I, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a fan. I love her voice. She's incredible. Anyway, didn't hear from her, didn't hear from, you know, that's the last time I saw Veronica. Until a year later, I was playing down the street in a club, and I used to go to this other club where there was a show band, and, and the, the um, get her out of there. The, uh, I walk in, and, and and I was I walking in, this, this guy said, hey, man, when you hear this girl sing, man, woo, I go, yeah, okay. 
just like you said last week, you know, or the week before these people saying whatever. I walk in and there's a bunch of junk up on the stage. Now, this is the kind of place where, you know, it's like kind of earth when back in the day. You have to be, remember back in the day, they used to wear the capizios and the silk outfits and the lights and the, I mean, it was a show band. It was like you go in and you see a show, right? Well, there was no show going up in that place that night. I said, what is going on? Now, here I am, handsome as can be. I got my Giorgio Armani suit. I got my tie. I'm looking suave. My hair's ooh, my <laughs> blowing George in the wind. George Michael look. Oh, I was, I was better Michael looking highlight. than George Michael. Yeah, Come on. True. I was a man. I was the man. That's right. That's Just right. ask me. I'll yeah. tell you. Anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so all of a sudden the lights come on. And I, you know, I see the, now, it's a showroom. You don't go up on the stage and start talking among the band members. There's three people in the front that are going, I'm going, is this, what is this, a play? I, I didn't know what it was, right? But all of a sudden, I, Veronica turned, she had a tube dress on, and, you know, she weighed about three pounds. But I looked up. <laughs> this is the truth, man. I said, that's my wife. Didn't hear her sing. Didn't I just? I, that's my wife, and I was going out with an Italian girl at the time, and I, you know, and my parents thought that that was the girl for me. She cooked. She was very nice, nice person, but I wasn't in love with that person. So it's it's really unfair to be with somebody that you're not in love with, or or go, who God didn't intend you to be with, when you choose what you want to wow, choose. Wow, right. <coughs> anyway. I spent the, the next two weeks chasing her down. I'm handing her cards. The next night I hand her, I go, don't, I gave you a card last night. She's like, I, I don't remember. <laughs> you don't remember? You, you, you know, you're just like a cat. You hear everything you say, but you just choose not to, you know, not choose to listen. just not to listen, <laughs> right? I said, who's this guy? You know, and, and I'm like, and of course, I thought immediately, the minute she laid eyes on me, it was done. It was a done deal. It's like, this guy is Mr. Studley, okay? Anyway, what have that happened to me? Anyway, <laughs> ministry, you know? The industry, that's what happened to me. Anyway, yeah, that's what, it'll, it'll pummel you. It'll take every ounce of breath right out of you. Because when you, when you, when you, when you've been involved yeah. with such stupid, yeah. and you start, and you, even the church, it's like so stupid that you go, yeah. what am I doing? Lord, where are you? He was with me all along. Yeah, yeah. And he's with us That's right, right now. That's right. Okay, because when two or more are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst, in of, the us. midst of us. He is with us. God is with us. He's with you. If you're on this broadcast today, he's with you in your house, in your room. So, um, uh, and I'm not to, I don't like to make light of slavery because there's nothing to me make light about. Okay, I'm just saying that, you know, we can't dwell on that, man. We can't dwell on hatred. If we dwell on what Al Sharpton's preaching, okay, you might as well just give him your life. Don't give it to Jesus. Go to 1 John 4.20 and see what, you, what the word of God says about hating your brother, black or white, green or blue, okay? Anyway, enough of that. So now I'm back on with, so I finally, I don't know what happened with Veronica, I can. I was telling her I knew this guy, and you know we had. Then we had a conversation, and I said, "Well, maybe, maybe she'll understand some of the singers that I like." So I mentioned Fred Hammond, Daryl Coley, Clark Sisters, and she's like, she's looking at Honky Donk over here. She's going, "This cracker knows these people. What? Whitey? Know, what? Where are you from?" That was the. That was the. Yeah, because I had just given my life to the Lord. Mm about six months before that and it was actually through gospel music that the Lord ministered to me and uh, came to me one uh, day in my dorm room I was all alone and and showed me that I needed to give my life to him so I mean I had just given my life to the Lord so I, those are the singers that I was listening to so that caught my ear yeah but you see but you didn't realize what the word says Satan comes as an angel of light yeah <laughs> And here comes the devil. <laughs> anyway, so we, we started talking. And, she, and, and then I said, I'm in now. I'm in. I'm in. 
So I said, you know, well, I'm going to take you to hear this guy sing. He sounds like Donny Hathaway. I think you'll love it. She goes, oh, sounds like Donny Hathaway? Really? Oh, yeah. You know, she's a college student. I'm a man at 33 years old. Oh, you I'm were 31. I was 20. 31, right. So, no, I was not, you know. Right, but you're still you a, know, you're, I was you're, 20. You're a yeah. college student. Yeah, okay? yes. And so, I, you know, I knew the right things to say. I was, I'm a, I'm a, I was a pastor, you know. Right back then, I was a pastor. I knew the right things to say. Things to say. Exactly. That's what they do. <laughs> they tell you what you want to hear so that they get you and then they trap you, people. And I'm, I'm combining this message with marriage and the wolves in cheap clothing because I, I'm still on the warning you, warning you of these people that are coming out to destroy you. I'm telling you, they, they will destroy your lives. You sit under their foolish talk, and you know what? You'll start to walk. Anyway, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Veronica, I, I, I said to her, I said, you know, I'll come pick you up. So, right, I mean, literally 10 minutes before I'm leaving my house, I'm going to say, well, I'm going on a date with Veronica. She calls. Um, I, I don't think I can make it tonight. I, uh, I'm like, no, 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 no. No, 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 you get, no, no. And of course, being the preacher that I was, you know, I had that, that, that instilled me. I talked her back into, go, you know, she goes, she goes, okay, all right, right? I go pick her up at Berkeley. Now, okay, okay hold on. Here's Mr. Suave. Must have gotten cold no, feet. No, here's, here's Mr. George, here's Mr., uh, you know, Giorgio Armani, mm -hmm. the hair, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I pull up to fr in the front of Mass Ave, Berkeley, with my hunk of junk Toyota pickup. Remember that thing with the rust coming through the, f the bottom of the floor yeah. and the side of the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like... And of course, I wasn't embarrassed because I was so, you know, it did, didn't... I'm still not embarrassed with the car I drive. So, I mean, who cares? It's just a car. No, I don't That's need right. a Bentley. I don't need a Rolls Royce. God did not give you one, Pastor. You stole one from the people. Anyway, she gets in the car. Now, I don't know what she was thinking when she, you know, did you did you go? What happened to the Mrs. Mrs. Success, successful here? <laughs> You're the number one singer in Boston. You drive this? Are you kidding? I, I, I'd rather have my hush puppies that are on my feet. You know, can we can, can we walk to the North End? We get to the North End, and of course. No, she's Puerto Rican, so she's on guard that I'm going to do something bad. And uh, yeah. and I was never going to do anything bad, <laughs> okay? Because she didn't know that I, I knew that she was my wife. Right. She had no clue. No. Mm -mm. You know, I don't know why. But anyway, <laughs> well, we had the Italian, uh, the Amores. We ate Italian. Yeah, yeah, Italian was yeah. amazing yeah. food in the north end yeah, yeah. of Boston. Incredible. It's the Italian district. In fact... That's where I proposed to Veronica, right under uh, Paul Revere, right there in the uh, the Paul oh, Revere that's, Trail, oh, that's right. in the cob yes. cobblestone in the north end of Boston. That's right. So if you visit Boston, yeah. you can say, "Angel Veronica, that's where they you proposed," you know. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. uh, you know, again, you know, Mister Successful, I handed her a rock. You know, if you could find the rock in the ring. No. Anyway. No. Yeah, oh, and Eva's losing her mind. She's this guy's doing too much talking. Anyway. We we finally, you know, you know, again, there's, there's, it's a long process, and now I don't know what happened. You know, we started writing together. We started doing music together. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, I was in a duo, and I remember Veronica coming in to the club, and she, she you know, we I had a beggar to sit in with me, the girl that I was working with. She said, "Oh, let's hear, let's hear Veronica." I said, "Okay." So. She gets up and does a Whitney Houston song and rips the building apart. Everybody stood, was st they were dancing, and all of a sudden they turned around. And I'd never seen it in a club. I never saw people standing there staring at her like, oh, my God. Like, what is this? Is Whitney in the, in the building? And it's like, and I looked over at Jeanette, who was, the, she was a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful girl. And she looked at me, she went, her eyes came out of her head. And we were supposed to go traveling, you know, go on the road. And she pulled me in the back, and she goes, that's who you're supposed to work with. You're supposed to be with Veronica. I'm bowing out. I go, no, 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 you say, no, I don't want to work with Veronica. No, no, 
that's the girl you're supposed to, you know, I know I'm going to marry her, but I, you know, I don't want to sing with her. I don't, I don't want to do that. Well, 29 years later, two children later, one cat later, <laughs> I get right. this, you know, Amen. I love, Amen. I love um, awesome. uh, Proverbs 12, Amen. 3. When you find a wife, you find a cr- the crown of your head. She's a jewel. Amen. And my Amen. wife is a crown Aww. on my head. Amen. She, like, and, and I love you more, I, I, I was choking up because this song meant a lot to us, you know. And I remember singing this song in a church and getting booed. I'm like, okay. <laughs> You're going to boo us because we're singing a love song. I remember song. singing that song and being like, well, I mean, because we were just married when we sang that song. Right, exactly. Basically, we have been married just a few years. And I was like, oh, this is a Not song. Not a few years. This is a song for old, an old year. couple. Huh? It was a yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. This is a song for an older, old, couple. older couple. Right. You know, it's like lyrically, this is, but wow. Anyway, God worked it out. Yeah. God knew. Yeah, God knows. God knows. He doesn't know <laughs> about it. No, he knows. He knows. No, I don't know. I know how he, I know how he knows. <laughs> you know. Anyway, you know, I'm, I am so, okay. are, we go, are we good with time? Yeah, yeah. I mean. Uh, yeah, we, uh, I just, I want to encourage you today. Yeah in your relationships, in your marriage, that marriage is an important step. Just like I told my, da- my beautiful daughter and my beautiful son-in-law, yeah. and I pray that they find Jesus because, you know, you're going to have trouble. That's the only way you can really learn how to love. Right, and you know God what? God is love. And that's and the that's only you know, and, but yeah, but hold on. That's how we learn that, to truly love. That's the only way mm-hmm. you can learn to forgive. Yeah. Yep. That too. Because that you too. can't possibly <laughs> forgive in your humanism, because that will go yeah. away real quick, and your argument will start again. <laughs> okay, and you'll start calling her names and him names, and and throwing the bricks at the w- window, and, and and all those things will just continue to snowball and roll around, because. You know, it's like I tell people, I ask people all the time, I said, what, did, what caused you divorce? You know, why did you get divorced, you know? I mean, people get divorced. I mean, I understand that. Okay, but I, I want to know why, and I'm sure God's going to ask you why, okay? And my thing is, it's usually over something really stupid. They, and most people, like I know this one guy, he's been married three times, and he talks to his son every day. And all he can talk about is his first wife. I've meant I've I've been around a lot of people who've been divorced. Didn't God say that in Revelation? Return to your first love. Return to your first love. Return to return to your first love. Right. Something like that. So my thing is is that make it happen, make it work. But the only way you can make it happen and make it work is to have that understanding of God in your life. If you don't have God the Father watching over your life, then you're on your own. Mm-hmm. What do you got, a, a, a therapist? What are they gonna, they're going to encourage you to get divorced. The, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to pay them so they'll give you advice to get divorced. They, they're not going to help you, you know, find the Lord. They're not going to find, the, they're not going to say go home and read the Bible. They're not going to do that. They're not going to say go search the scriptures for marriage. They're not going to do that, you know. And I have to say this today, you know, Jesus c- created us man and woman, and the two shall become one, okay? Amen. That's Amen. a powerful breath that God breathes into us when he breathes marriage into our existence, and and, and he gives us the the, the understanding of each other, how, how we're to love one another. I'm to love her like Christ loved the church, okay? And, uh, and I know it's hard to love the church today. And, and I, that's I, where people are running away like crazy, you know, because they're, they're, they, they don't see the results of church. Mm. But I'm going to tell you something. Mm. Don't run away from God. Yeah. You can run away from that stupid building up there with 30,000 people in it, but don't run away from God. Don't do it. I promise you. Don't don't mess around. 
your life will be completely destroyed without God, the Father. Gone. You don't have a life. Amen. It, it's not even going to work. So anyway, I praise God for my, my wife who has put up with many, many stupid things. That's why I have the shirt. When God gave me that slogan, stop the stupid, it wasn't for you. It was for me. Stop the stupid, stupid. Okay? And it wasn't to be a reviler. It was to wake you up, Angelo. Okay, like Paul said, such were some of you. You weren't any different than they were. So stop pointing your finger, okay, and, and grow, in the, grow in Christ. Grow in the word. And as I grew in, closer and I started hearing God, you know, my marriage increased. My relationship with my wife increased. We're together 24-7, pretty much. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's amazing. The only time we go out to eat, you know, go out, we go out to eat. Like, you know, then Eve is here by herself. You know, she's here with us 24-7. But, you know, I want to encourage you to seek God. Open his word. You may not even understand it. If you don't understand it, call me, email me, whatever. If you have a problem in your marriage, in your, in your relationship, give us a call. We are here to help. That's part of our ministry, Veronica, is to help married couples stay married so that you don't get trapped in doing something that God hates. You don't want to do that. You want to save your marriage at all costs. I mean, there's people that, that have had sexual immorality and, and they've still saved their marriages, worked it, worked it out. So here we are, Angela and Veronica, 29 years later, celebrating one of the most beautiful days of my life with my beautiful wife. We love you. We're loving you to the truth. We love you to the truth. The truth is we're telling you the truth. So please receive it today. Please receive our hearts. Our heart is for you to be, protect the sheep. That's what a pastor does. He protects the sheep, okay? Jesus laid his life down for the sheep, okay? So we're going to get to that next week anyway. But we love you. Have a wonderful day. I'm going to go with my wife and have some Italian food. I love you. God bless you.